again. Thank you for joining me. This is a very serious report. We've been running around the world looking for uh, chemtrails, worried about what they're dropping on us in the way of poisons. Here we are running around the world now where the uh, threat is that they're going to inject a um, poison into our systems with the swine flu virus that they in turn have patented and they are also under criminal charges from Jane Burgermeister for attempted mass murder and attempted mass genocide. Now we've got even a bigger problem. If you want to know what's happening, last week, as you know, there was over four um, earthquakes. We found out that they are man-made. They were not an act of God. And now we had a big dust storm over Australia from the west coming through to the east and measuring one length of the whole of Australia from Victoria through to Cairns. Now that is something that has never happened before and we were very suspicious and we found out that there was a big bang down in Victoria before the earthquake. There was a big bang, two or three bangs before the dust storm started from out in the west. And now we find that there was a big bang and colours in the sky before the earthquake that happened with um, uh, China. Now let me just say this to you. The US technology has now the high frequency active aurora research program, that is HARP, it's a part of their strategic defense initiatives, that's SDI. Their scientific evidence that it shows that HARP is fully operational. It has the ability of potentially triggering floods, droughts, hurricanes and earthquakes. And from their point of view, it is a weapon of mass destruction. They don't have to fire one shot. They can stop all of any uh, bombs that are coming through the atmosphere through to their country. They can stop them up there before they come in. Potentially, it constitutes a uh, tool that they can use to um, destabilise agriculture, eco ecological systems at, over the entire world at will. Now, if that's not a serious thing. If you can control the media, so we've, if they've kept it a secret, and if you can control the media and you can control the weather and you can tell everybody that there's a global warming, well, then they can melt a bit of ice with this apparatus, with this harp, and cause global warming when we know that we're not in a global warming we're in a global cooling so come with me on this report now what is this global warming all about it's not about renewable energy and it's not about pollution and it's not about saving the planet it's about collecting some money to fund the new world order the agenda 21 the administration you can't have too much CO2. Look at the tree on the left. If there's not enough CO2, it's not growing. Compared with the tree on the right, you can see that if there's more CO2, the plants will grow a lot higher, a lot thicker, and a lot faster. Now, I like this little graph that Leon did. If you want to look at how we would reduce the CO2 emissions, I'm pointing on the screen at a tiny little dot there. Can you see that? There's a tiny little dot there. That would represent the amount of uh, reduction that you would cause in uh, CO2 compared with the big graph here. The big Our gauze the man that they send around the world to tell us all about the CO2 and now there's 37 scientists are suing Al Gore for fraud and suing him for giving fraudulent information to Congress. Make a note of that on your screen. You can see there are 31,000 independent United States scientists who have signed a petition saying there is no conclusive evidence that CO2 causes climate change. You can get this on longrangeweather.com. And it's a graph to show you uh, the high and low of global cooling and global warming going back 3,000 years. On your left of the screen, and I'll point to for you, 1100 BC, there was a global warming. And where was the CO2 coming from? There was no cars and there was no trains and there was no buses back in those years. Here, we've got the Grecian Empire and that's approximately 400 to 200 BC, global cooling. Then we've got another Roman Empire, we have a global warming. The Dark Ages was in a global cooling and we have another global warming here. Coming all the way through, we're now normal going downhill to a global cooling. So how does that stack up with Al Gore? So what's the conclusion? It's the sun and it's volcano activity that causes any climate change, which is natural. Now, if you don't believe that, you can see here that the cooling is down here. I'm pointing to you on the screen. There's a the cooling. And yet, 
Look at the CO2. It's on the rise up. It has nothing to do with global warming or global cooling. And here's the junk science that comes out and sponsored by Rockefeller. The IPCC prediction says it's going to go up here. You can see on the screen that I'm pointing to you. But where is it? It's not going up there. It's going down here. So, where's the CO2? Is it up in the ionosphere? No. Where is it? Is it near the ozone level? Is it causing a hole in the ozone level? No. It's down on the earth where the trees live. So let's talk about HAARP, H-A-A-R-P. That's their secret weapon. That's the ace up the sleeve of the New World Order, what they're going to do to make every country in the world capitulate to them. On your screen now, we're going to be talking about the ionized layer. To explain to you how the radio waves work, the red and the blue arrows are called sky waves. These waves bounce off the ionosphere and can bounce for many thousands of miles depending upon the atmospheric conditions. Now let's have a look. There's the graph for you to have a look. You can stop your film and have a look. And as you can see there you've got three layers, F layer, E layer, D layer. And this is to demonstrate to you that the radio waves of HARP bounce up and down, bounce up and down, and they can give a fine line of a weapon ray and bounce it anywhere in the world at this particular time. Now there's always got to be a pulse before an earthquake and there's a couple of earthquakes that happened a, a couple of weeks ago. There was no pulse before it. Why? Because they made the earthquakes themselves. Let's explain it to you. Now besides obvious acoustic waves generated before and during an earthquake, a part of the preparation process of large earthquakes is the generation of electromagnetic emissions. Now, this is what HARP's all about. Now on this note down the bottom, and you can read it with me, the United States technology has been perfected. H-A-A-R-P, that's the Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI, Recent scientific evidence now shows it's fully operational. It has the ability of potentially triggering floods, droughts, hurricanes and earthquakes. And from a military standpoint, HARP is a weapon of mass destruction. It is a weapon and it is an instrument ca capable of selectively destabilizing agriculture and ecological systems all over the world at will. There is this ice up their sleeve, and if they want to melt some ice caps, if they want to alter the uh, climate, that's what they're going to use to do it, and then they'll have every country capitulate to hand them over money for funding their New World Order and their Agenda 21. Now, there were four earthquakes last week, all man-made, and there was an earthquake near Melbourne down in Victoria last week, man-made again. There was a dust storm man-made. Never before in the history of Australia was there a dust storm that measured from Victoria all the way through to Cairns, coming over from the west and hitting the oceans. Never happened before. That was all done by HARP. They're having little games with us and they're testing what they, what they can do. They're testing their muscles. Now, uh, and in China, the full horror of Monday's earthquake is starting to unfold. As rescuers push to the heart of the disaster, they're finding entire towns virtually obliterated. For HARP, High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. What does HARP do? HARP is, uh, is a large antenna where we beam radio frequency energy up into the upper atmosphere. Were to manage the program? Applications uh, discussed in the patents included destroying missiles. Communications control and disruption were included. There were some other ideas both to possibly modify weather and finally uh... in 1983 I did radio tomography with 30 watts looking for oil in the ground I found 26 oil wells over a nine state area and 100 percent of the time was accurate which is 30 watts of power beaming straight into solid rock harp uses a billion watts beam straight into the ionosphere for experiments Picture these strings on the piano as layers of the earth. Each one has its own frequency. What we used to do is beam 
radio waves into the ground <clears throat> and it would vibrate any strings that were present in the ground. We might get a sound back like and we'd say that's natural gas. We might get a sound back like and we say that's crude oil. We were able to identify each frequency. We accomplished this with just 30 watts of radio power. If you do this with 2 billion watts, the vibrations are so violent that the entire piano would shake. In fact, the whole house would shake. In fact, the vibrations could be so severe underground that could even cause an earthquake. Now this is what you saw in the sky prior to the big earthquake in China. And also there was a couple of bangs. And there was a couple of bangs prior to the earthquake in Victoria last week. And there was a couple of bangs in the sky prior to the dust storm that started over Australia.